Having somebody or something disappear mid-shot is one of the oldest movie-making tricks. I'm Simon Jones, and in this tutorial we're going to be covering the third main use for camera projection, object removal. Making something disappear on camera is easy. George Melier did it at the dawn of cinema by filming an actor, then stopping the camera, taking the actor out of shot, then rolling film again, thus creating the illusion of the actor simply vanishing. With a locked off camera on a tripod, this is super simple. As soon as the camera starts moving though, things get considerably trickier. This kind of shot, with the car slowly disappearing while the camera moves, is only really possible since the advent of digital compositing. Note how you can see through the car to the runway below with the perspective shifting correctly as the camera moves. Now, there's two obvious ways to do this. One would be to add the car in post, perhaps using a 3D model, a little like how we put a car into the car park shot in one of our older tutorials. However, that's not always an option, and it's not always the best option either. For example, it's not so easy to have a realistic 3D model of an actor, and in this case the shot had already been filmed with the car in place throughout the shot. This is where camera projection waltzes in, once again making the point that it's the coolest effect in town. Here's how the shot works. First, I took a still frame from the original video and opened it up in an image editor. I then painted out the car using the clone tool. I then brought that clean image back in and used camera projection to project it over the top of the car. So although it looks like the car is fading out of the video, what's actually happening is that the projected clean plate is fading in, and that clean plate has been projected onto the surface of the road so that it shifts in perspective as you would expect as that camera moves. The same technique could be used to remove an actor from a shot, perhaps if you wanted to do some kind of teleportation. Now the big benefit of using this method is that the object can still be photographed on location in place with correct lighting. This makes for a very realistic end result without needing a ton of advanced compositing work or a load of effort put into making sure that your lighting matches on a green screen and on location. Let's take it from the top. Grab the project files from the video description or the link in the video if you want to follow along directly. So here I have a new project with the crane shot video imported. The first thing to do is track the shot so that we have a valid 3D camera move. You can use your camera tracker of choice, but I used Mocha Hit Film, simply because it's included with every copy of Hit Film 3 Pro. So if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you already have it. I'm not gonna dive into the full complexities of Mocha in this video. The main thing to know for this shot is that to create a camera solve, I only needed to track two areas, the floor and the car wheel. What you're looking for is two planar surfaces that aren't on the same orientation. That gives Mocha enough data to figure out the camera solve. Also note that I moved the floor track's planar surface over to the car, so although I tracked the road over here where there was lots of nice detail, I moved the actual surface over towards the car so that that tracking data would be exactly where I wanted it once used in hit film. We have a whole series of Mocha tutorials hosted by Axel that go into more detail on all this stuff, so make sure you check those out if you want to know more. Okay, included in the project file you downloaded is the fully camera solved shot which I exported out of Mocha. So you don't have to jump into Mocha and do this yourself if you want to just get on with the actual projection part of this tutorial. So Mocha's given us the data we need to create the camera projection. Note that Mocha doesn't recreate an accurate 3D representation of the scene like a traditional point cloud tracker such as Buju or Synthize. Instead it creates a more relativistic setup, which is why it's really crucial to have your tracked points close to where you want to composite objects. The next step is to create our clean background frame. When using camera projection, you need to use source media, which will result in the minimal amount of stretching. For example, if I took a frame from early in the shot, it wouldn't have enough data and would end up being stretched as the virtual camera raises up. Camera projection is really cool, but it's not magic. It still needs that information and it can't just make something up. So if I take a frame from the end of the video where we're looking down on the ground, we have all the information we need for that ground plane. And that angle, when the camera moves back down, is fine because you're just removing some of that data rather than having to bring it in. So think carefully about your shot and where you can get the most data in your projected image. This frame I'm going to export using the handy export frame option up here in the viewer. Do make a note of which frame you're on when you do this. In this case I'm using frame 171. In your image editor of choice you now want to paint out the car. Now, the thing to note is that I'm by no means a digital artist, so you'll probably do a much better job than me. If you're not sure how to paint out an object, look up some tutorials for your image editor. 
Generally, you want to find the clone stamp tool and copy from a clean area of the frame to the area you're trying to clean up. It's also worth noting that this entire step could be simplified by getting a quick clean plate during the shoot. For example, if at the end of filming this shot the car had then been driven out of frame, we'd already be done. We'd have that clean shot of the ground looking down. So if you plan your shots ahead of time, you can actually save yourself a ton of work once you get to post. So this clean plate can now be imported back into HitFilm as a still image, ready for projecting. Our mocha track gave us a composite shot with a camera and a bunch of tracked points. It's now time to set up the projection, which will be somewhat familiar if you've followed our previous tutorials in the series. I'm going to create a nice big plane from the new layer menu at about 4096 by 3112. You want your plane to be as big as possible because the more resolution it has, the more detailed your projection can be and the closer you're going to bring your camera. This layer I'm going to switch to 3D and then parent it to one of the points near the car. In the layers transform, I'll then right click the property group and reset it. This will make sure that the position properties are reset to 0, 0, 0, moving the layer right on top of that tracked point. You can probably guess the next step, which is from the effects panel, I'm going to add the grid effect. This gives us some kind of 3D reference so we can see which angle the plane is actually on. I'm now going to rotate that layer around until it's aligned with the floor. Switching the X rotation to about 133 degrees does the trick for this particular solve. If your camera tracker exports points with accurate orientation built in, then this should be even simpler. We now need to create a projection camera. The way to do this with tracked scenes is to find your main camera that was brought in from your camera tracker and then duplicate it. I'm going to do this by right clicking on the camera and choosing duplicate. I'll move the duplicated version down to the bottom of the timeline and rename it by hitting F2 and calling it static. Don't forget the top camera in your layer stack is the one that's actually used to display the scene. So this camera down below won't be used when we actually are rendering out. I'll now add my clean plate to the shot. It doesn't really matter where the clean plate is on the timeline, but I'm just going to put it at the bottom as well so that it's out the way. The camera duplicate still has all of the movement keyframes of the original. To turn it into a proper static camera, open up its transform properties. Make sure you're on the correct frame that you referenced earlier, and then turn off keyframing for all of the transform properties. This removes all the keyframes while keeping the camera in its current playhead position, which is the correct position for frame 171. Because our clean plate was also captured on frame 171, this means that the static camera now represents the camera position on that exact frame, and it's going to stay in that position throughout the timeline, making it perfect as our projection source. On our projection plane we can now add the projector effect. Projection from is going to be set to the clean image, while the camera is set to the static camera. Therefore we're using the static camera and the clean image to create the projection, which is then warped and projected onto the plane layer, according to the position of our main moving camera. As a result, the car appears to vanish. Because our digital camera is matched to the movement of the real camera, the projected clean image can be turned on or off at any point, or made semi-transparent, and the projection works as you'd expect. Camera projection lets you get your camera off the tripod and do more elaborate moves. It means you only have to paint out the object on a single frame, rather than doing a ton of tedious rotoscoping and painting across an entire shot and it also gives you an alternative to using green screen or having to match lighting and camera moves for all of your composited elements. For an extra challenge, try taking these techniques and adapting them to create, say, a Star Trek transporter effect or an invisible man effect, or perhaps a Superman star landing where your actor flies in from above and lands on the ground whilst your camera is moving through the scene. There's a ton of potential in this technique, just as with our other camera projection tutorials, so hopefully this will trigger off a whole load of ideas. Many thanks for watching, and don't forget to share your creations over on the hitfilm.com forums. Until the next time, I wish you happy filmmaking.